Hey developers, today I'm going to tell you five things I wish I knew when I started programming. So I went back through and I thought about the last several years of my programming journey and some things that I think that would have helped me out when I first started out. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So make sure you guys watch all the way to the end and uh, we'll begin here. All right, so let's begin here. And the first thing I wanna say is a few things about me before we get too far into this. So uh, my name is Eric, I'm a full stack software developer. I work mostly in Java, but I worked. Uh, I am working a ton in Angular 7 right now and also Vue.js. And also I'm a big fan of Ember.js as well. And I do a little bit of React. I'm the author of the Vue.js in action book. I'll Make sure there's a link below if you guys are interested in, in checking that out. I'll give you the first chapter of the book for free. And also, I have a CS degree, but I consider myself self-taught in everything with uh, concerning web development be because that was really something I never got taught in my CS degree. I really taught myself everything. Um, I, I what actually happened was I learned Ember.js was really the first jump into web development for me beyond what I did, and I did some web development in high school, but Ember was like the first jumping off point, and I think I've learned a lot since then, so I'll talk a lot about it. And also, I'm a family man, and uh, that was me at Disneyland with me and my wife and my kids. So let me tell you a little bit about the fundamentals. So this is something that I think I wish I knew a lot more when I started, and what I mean by that is that uh, when I started, I kind of just jumped from one topic to another, and I wasn't consistent with what I learned. And really what I needed to do is to learn these fundamentals because programming is like building blocks. So if you learn a programming language, you're gonna have some of the same concepts, most of the same concepts in every single language. So for example, there's probably gonna be some way to do conditionals. There's gonna be some way to do functions or methods. You might have some object-oriented programming, you might have classes. Almost every one of them you can do some sort of recursion from. There's uh, these, this thing called functional programming. You might have dictionaries, arrays, objects. You might have to figure out how to sort things, how to do searches. And then there's definitely tons of basic data structures that are really handy to know. So I would do is when I first started out, if I knew this, I would have done it, is to really, really learn these topics, understand them well, because they will transfer to every programming language you learn. In fact, once you learn your first programming language, be it JavaScript, Python, or Ruby, or Java, that will really help you because the second one, you'll notice that this is how they do this. This is how they do conditionals. This is how they do functions. This is how the app is built. They use these type of patterns. So it, once you start learning the fundamentals, it'll become a lot easier, especially when you start creating more complicated applications. You'll be able to see, oh, in this other language I learned, this is what, this is what I did. And that's not to say that you want to learn one programming language and then jump to another one. You don't want to jump from one programming language to another. You want to pick one and get good at it at the beginning. And the, one, the three that I choose that I recommend is JavaScript, Python, or Ruby. Uh, you know, MIT's beginning CS 101 class is taught in Python because it has so many different concepts that you'll need to learn to be a great programmer. I mean, it has like object-oriented programming. It has... Um, dictionaries, it has a ton of things. And you'll see that if you start with one of those languages, those are great starting off points. Also, keep in mind, you really don't need a MacBook. I know there's this kind of cult of Mac out there that you need a programmer, you need a MacBook, you don't really need it. Just an old PC will work. And you just can go, I think you probably even go to a library and just work there if you need to. Or use something like coder.com. The next really important concept that I wish I, I knew when I first started out is community. Just having like a programming partner or buddy or somebody that you can just hash ideas out with is really important. Someone that you can either text, email, call, someone that you can get a hold of, or you can even better, if you can even have like a little study group with that person, it'll make your learning much faster. Now, if you're in a traditional computer science program or in a boot camp, that's kind of already built in. But I know a lot of people are trying to learn this by themselves. And even if you are in a boot camp or a CS program or college program, having like one or two people that you get together with 
weekly, every other week to really help each other out is a great idea. I know a lot of local meetups also have this. They'll have uh, after either after the meetup or it'll be a separate kind of branch of it. They'll have study groups. Make sure you join, join those because like I said in this quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So more people you can get together and help each other out, it really, really helps. And it helps you be more accountable. One thing that I think you hear a lot is passion projects. Is that as soon as you start diving into some programming language or you, you jump into web development, sooner or later you want to actually show people what you've learned. I think that's great, but I also think you should have satisfy a, a few pieces of criteria first. First, I think the passion project that you want to choose has to be challenging. So it needs to really push your boundaries. You need to kind of think of an idea of something that would have some complexity to it. So if you're studying web development, try to think of kind of a, a scratch your own itch project, maybe an alarm clock that would wake you up at certain times or something that would help you study. So, so, so something fun like that, or maybe you've always wanted to to try to sell, you know, create a website to sell something. You know, that's a great way to do it, create a sales site. Make sure what you're doing also is useful. So not just like a calculator app or a blog or to-do list. Those are fine when you're just learning, but you want your passion project to be something more useful. So not maybe not just for you, but for other people. And the minimum criteria is it's useful for you, but if you can make it useful for other people, then that's even better. And of course, you need to complement what you're learning. So Let's say you're learning Python at the time. If you can create a cool Python app with like a game, then if you're learning Python and you're learning Pygame at the same time, those would complement each other. So make sure it does. And my advice is always to make sure what you're teaching, you can have it be uh, up on some public website. So either post on GitHub or post it online somewhere or have it be a website so anyone can look at it and then ask other people to check it out and then get some feedback on it. Even post it up on Reddit or share it on Twitter. It's a great way to get some feedback and to make your project better. Another important concept is just-in-time learning. So what I mean by this is that we have so many different avenues out there to learn. We have this YouTube channel you're listening to right now, but we also have podcasts, YouTube, Udemy, FC, uh, Free Code Camp, if you don't know what that's, the FCC is. So all these places have all this great information, but it's kind of information overload. So just-in-time learning is you take all these different resources and then you find the specific topic that you're trying to learn at that point. So if you're learning web development and you're learning how to do images, then you might want to search on YouTube for you know, lazy loading images or something like that. So make sure that you're very specific in what you're learning and you're learning it at the right time because you don't want to learn something and then six months later have to look it up again. Another thing that I wish I did is I have this YouTube channel and I've, I used to have a blog, I actually still have a blog. And I wish when I started that I shared more because I think sharing really helps solidify and helps you understand the concepts you're trying to learn. So if you're trying to learn Python or learn Ruby on Rails, why not create a blog and start sharing what you're learning at the same time? If blogging isn't your thing, then you might be want to try to post on Instagram what you're learning or put a Facebook update or at least somewhere you can share you know, where you're going through, what struggles you're going through and what you're learning. Another benefit of sharing soon sooner was if I ran into mistakes, other people could have corrected me sooner. And also, it's a great way of building community. So if someone sees that you're trying to learn a program, they may want to try to learn a program too, and then you two together can start helping each other and, and, and working together. So I think sharing what you're learning is a great way to, is pretty good, and you should do it. So thank you very much for watching. I know those were just five quick tips, but I'd love to hear some of the things that you guys are going through. If you guys have any tips you think I should have put in here, let me know. I really appreciate it. And make sure you click that like button and share with anybody that might be interested in this. Thanks.